Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So this time I want to take a look at some of the different connection options with Power, with Power Apps. So a lot's been made about the, the common data model and your ability to connect with different connections, whether it's just Dynamics CRM or soon to be Dynamics 365, AX, and some of those different items. I want to talk just a little bit about what that looks like. So, you know, how is the common data model structured? What are some of your different connection options? And then more importantly, how do you interact with some of that information once you're there? So obviously there's a few different options that you have available when you start talking about how you're going to connect this custom app that you're creating to your environment. Now, biggest area right here would be obviously the common data model. Now from a common data model, the biggest thing to remember is currently the common data model is built kind of off of an AX structure. So it really has, when you start talking about the entities and the table design and the things that are inside that common data model, you're gonna see that that's really more geared towards AX type situations. That by no means doesn't mean that you can't use Dynamics CRM or Dynamics 365 because obviously that will be one of the key connection points that you're working with. But at least we want to understand how it's set up and, and what some of the different connection options are. And then obviously once you've connected to those environments, what are some of the different you know, commands that you can use for submitting forms and, and working through individualized items. So let's first look at some of the connection options. So we talked a little bit about the common data model in Dynamics 365. As you can see, there's a few different kind of templated options that you can use to connect to individualized surface, uh, services that you might be working with, whether it's Salesforce, OneDrive, you know, SharePoint, even if you wanted to kind of create your own blank application. Let's first talk a little bit about the connection option. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on connections and this is going to open up kind of my web client for Power App. And one of the things that you'll see in here is my different connection options that I have associated with it. Now I want to draw your attention to a couple of different things. So one of the things that just recently changed um, with kind of the way that the, the Power Apps and the Common Data Model works is when it was first introduced in preview you really only had your own kind of individualized common data model. So when you were creating information and working with information you were really working with it tied to your office 365 account and then setting up kind of your own database infrastructure that you could work with and, and build out from there now as things are getting closer and, and some of the new release cadences are coming up one of the things that they actually changed here right towards the end of October was you actually have two different environments so you are gonna actually have kind of your org environment which will contain the connections and the items that you want to work with from an organizational level and then you have your individualized environment. So realistically, you're going to have kind of two versions of the common data model. You're going to have the organization-based common data model, which ultimately, if you're creating internal apps that people are going to connect to, that's the one more often than not they're going to use. But then you also have kind of your individualized one if you're creating, you know, maybe custom individualized apps that people are going to use for very specific sources and items when they're working through it. So you'll see a couple of different tiers as you're working th as you're working through through kind of your different models. Now, when I come into this, I can see obviously that I can look at the common data model and what some of the different options are. I can see connections and securities within those. And then obviously when I connect an app to that, I can actually interact with that from inside the application. So that's some of the options that you have around connections. And then ultimately based upon what specific account and environment you're working with, obviously you could create connections for Office 365, Dynamics CRM, Dynamics 365, any of the items that you wanted to work with. So the first thing that you're gonna do when you're creating an app is you're gonna kind of define what is the source or or the item that you want to work with. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. So for example, I could just start with kind of a blank app create kind of a blank app that we, as we saw kind of in the previous video, that doesn't necessarily have any connection points to, to any specific environment. Now I can come down in here and I can actually add connection options. So you'll see in the first area here, it talks about adding a data source. I also could come up into here and I could add data sources this way as well. Either one is ultimately going to get me to the same option. So when I go ahead and click on add a data source, it's going to ask me, okay, what specific data source do I want to work with? Do I want to work with the common data model? Do I want to work with dynamic CRM? Do I have static information that I want to work with? Basically any item that I've established as a connection will be areas that I can work with in here as I'm going through. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick this Dynamics 365 instance. I'm going to 
connect to the environment. And then as it's connecting, now I will see all the entities that I could work with. Now at this point, I can work with any number of you know, Dynamics 365 or CRM traditional entities that I want to work with, or I can always add additional ones later based upon the items that I want to work with. So in this case, maybe we'll just do accounts and contacts. And then I'll connect. and this will reestablish the connection. Now, the other thing is if you ever change your instance that you wanna work with, then you basically do have to remove and re-add the entities and the items that you wanna work with. The other thing is if you have metadata changes, so people have gone in and you know added fields or added individual items to your Dynamics 365 data source or CRM data source that you're working with, you will then basically have to go in and kind of refresh the metadata to be able to facilitate that as you're moving forward. But then you'll have your connection to your environment that you can start working with and kind of building off from there. Now, once you're connected, now you have this concept of the different screen scenarios that you want to work with inside the application. And these are ultimately what are going to give you the capabilities to define what specific type of application you want to work with. And so the next part to this is we'll show you kind of what that looks like inside as you're building things through. So just for sake of time, we have one here that we've 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 kind of spun up. So realistically, you'll have a couple of different screens that you'll more often than not see. You'll have kind of your browse screen, which is going to be more of your gallery view, which is going to have all of the individual records that you have access to based upon the data set that you've chosen to work with. You're going to have your detail screen, which will be the actual information that you'll see when you open up a specific record inside the application. And then you're also going to have your edit screen, which is going to give you the capabilities to go in and actually edit or modify these individual pieces as you're working through. Now from there, there's a few different commands and items that you can use to more target some of this specific information when you're working with it. The first is what's called your, your filter function. And so your filter function is, really, is what allows you to filter down the data set maybe based upon the entity that you want to work with or the specific state code that you want to work with. So this is where you could go in and define specifically where this data is coming from from within the application itself. The other one that you'll see is kind of your search functionality. So in here, I could define how I want to search this information when people are working through it. So if I were to come back to, for example, this screen and click in search, I could see in here, this is where I could kind of define, you know, what happens based upon as people, you know, enter in this information. So I can see there's different commands and different items based upon what happens when somebody selects it, when somebody hits, you know, changes the information in there, when somebody specifically clicks on the search button or or defines what searching criteria they want to work with so this is where based upon what I want them to do as they're going through I can define what that searching criteria looks like so as the information changes I can define okay what what happens from a searching criteria and so this is where you can now define okay how is this going to work as individual people are going through and entering this and so typically you're going to do kind of like a search criteria content so you will execute those called the search command kind of tell it the entities that you want to work with and then specify where you want to search that information from. And I'll just kind of show you this from a very specific type situation um, as you're going through and, and, and looking at some of this baseline functionality. So for example, if I were to go into the search criteria and I were to enter in, I can see that it plugs in my search option. I can specify what entity I want to work with, which in this case is coming from contacts. Then you're going to specify what is the criteria or what contains the search that you want to look like. Well, this particular field, if we look at it, is actually called text search box one. And so this is that naming convention that we talked a little bit about for each individual field that you have selected. And you can see that here up on the name itself. This is where if I wanted to call this something else, I could. So in this case, I'll just call this And then the text is what is ultimately going to be brought into that. And then I can specify what specific fields I want to search 
based upon those options. So this is where from a building the information, what are the data subsets that I wanna pull in here that are ultimately going to allow me to determine what it is and where are the criteria options that I wanna search from based upon those situations. So this is just how you define what that process looks like as you're building this information across. And so this would now be searching based upon the information that's in the text box to, br to bring that information in. And you have that same situation from a lookup perspective. If you wanted to do lookup information based upon items, you could look up a specific record and define when somebody looks at an information, what you're working with. You could define the, again, the entity, the field, and then pull the information in from there. Because realistically, Realistically, what you're seeing inside here are just your subsequent fields that are associated with this entity inside the application. Now, a lot of times you do have to specify specific field options that you want to work with because you'll notice a lot of the information initially is going to be tied more specifically to you know lookup values and GUIDs and items. So there is a little bit of kind of pre-filtering some of this information out to define what the information is that you want to work with. And then the other options that you'll have in here would be specifically around actually, you know, executing commands within the application. So submitting forms. Um, creating forms, those kind of options. So when you're done, for example, here, and I want to go ahead and, and submit this, I can click on this button and I can define, okay, what happens when somebody selects, selects this? And if they choose something like submit form, that's going to save the information in there. Um, if I wanted to go ahead, there's options for what's called new form, which basically sets up a form for creating a new record. There's an option called edit form, and there's an option called reset form. And so if you look in some of the different scenarios around the application, it kind of defines what specific items that you would you would want to do within here. So what you're basically going to do is kind of tie this to the data source and then based upon what specific element you want to select, this is where you can define what's going to happen. So in this case, it's going to go into edit form mode. When I click on the edit button, this is what's going to allow us to open up the edit screen application from the option and then be able to facilitate what we want to do from there. Same thing if I were to come over into here on the option here and click on this option here for the plus sign, this is going to open up the new form, which is basically going to open up whatever form we've designated as the, the form for entering information and define how that works. And so what you want, what I would recommend doing is, is just pulling in kind of the sample app, whether you pull it in from, you know, using Dynamics 365 or whether you pull it in from using the common data model and just start playing with what some of these individual commands are going to look like. And so you can see how these things are going to be reset based upon those options. And so you've got refresh options, you've got sorting option, and you have the ability to work with metadata and, and work with information from there. So there's a lot of different options based upon whatever it is that you're trying to work with. But this gives you at least kind of an idea on how you can connect to those different data sources and then work with the information from that standpoint. So hopefully you, you see how you can at least get started. And that was really the point of this video. What are some of your connection options? What are some of the baseline commands that you can use? And so what I would really encourage you to do is to just go out, connect kind of a, a baseline templated app to either you know, a Dynamics 365 or a Dynamics CRM subscription or your common data model, and then just kind of start playing with some of the different commands from there. You know, Power Apps, it's still relatively new. And obviously as it matures, we'll do more and more videos on how to really manipulate the information and do some more advanced topics, but at least hopefully this got you kind of a nice start in as far as connecting to different things. So again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying thank you very much for watching everybody. Take care and have a good one.